we are here today at the Compagnie Theater in Amsterdam. It's the night of the press freedom. Tonight here there's going to be a lot of journalists that works in areas that there's no press freedom at all. We're going to speak with some of these journalists and we're going to ask them some questions about how to work in these areas when there's no press freedom. It's freedom, said it's freedom time now. It's freedom, said it's freedom time now. Time to get free, or give yourselves up now. This night is about press freedom, it is about you. We invited a lot of students and would-be journalists and our inspiration is to explain to you how difficult it is but how inspiring it also is to be a journalist. Um, so this evening we will be talking and getting to know each other so that we can become aware of the importance of press freedom. For journalists, for media diversity, for our societies, um, in order to create a living democracy. That is what we in Press Now believe in, and I believe that everyone in this panel shares this value. And that is very needed because today the Press Freedom Monitor came out, and it uh, basically counted countries in which people have freedom of expression and a free media sector. That is the case in 16% of this world. 16% of the world's countries have press freedom. Just imagine 84% not having press freedom. It's freedom, said it's freedom time now. It's freedom, said it's freedom I saw on the news a BBC story from Zimbabwe about um, <laughs> young people who were being used to rape and pillage in the name of um, sovereignty or patriotism, whatever you want to call it. Um, and this elicited a very angry response from the Zimbabwe government. They denied it. They said BBC was lying. Now, in my column, the following week, I wrote to confirm the big BC story because we at the Daily News had written that story a couple of years previously. It, it, this was a true story. This is something that was true. This was happening in Zimbabwe. But to declare me an enemy of the people for telling the truth is what scares many journalists from carrying out their jobs. You cannot criticize officially because there is censorship in the government owned media. But if you make it live, you can do something. They cannot stop you because it's going on. Yes. But what did you say then? Did you make jokes or did you, uh, uh, did no. you, did you say harsh For things? For example, uh, I invite some officials to panel discussion. And I allowed to call the people direct from outside and to give his opinion. Mm -hmm. At this time, of course, the people is very afraid. They are not managed to call from their home, but they call from the public phone. Mm -hmm. And they say something. Anonymous, and anonymous, not giving their name, but yes. only criticized. Even they can give the name, but they can give false name. Yeah. And they hang up. I, I believe that um, you know the people have a right to know. It is a fundamental human right. Once you start saying they can't have this right or they can they can have this one to a limited extent, then you are now tampering with people's rights, and you just have to draw a line that you know people have to have their rights, all their rights. And there's no way you can say um, press freedom you know, can't be absolute. Um, it must be, absolutely.
To me, as a politician, I think there is no democracy be without free journalism. And in the Development Committee, it is a constant struggle to make this understood by governments in developing countries. That if they want development, and if you understand development as the enlargement, the gradual enlargement of freedoms, then the freedom of the press is an essential element of it. So this is why I come here just to show my solidarity with journalists who are in trouble elsewhere, uh, and to see what else I could undertake as a politician to strengthen their position. All the news we're getting about difficult countries in the world are coming through the media, and people are not uh, asking about how are we getting those informa uh, getting that information, but they're thinking about that information. So today we would like to ask the world the interest for the median and how do we get the information and how do we get the information to the people who can benefit from it the most. Well you cannot say there is a real press freedom in Italy, there's clear, it's a clear case of a lack of press freedom especially on television but also in the radio is a clear case. Intimidation uh, and all kinds of, of other rubbish should journalists should get free of. What did we do? We tried to introduce new legislation in the European Union against the monopolies in the, of the press in Europe, because the press concentration is a huge problem, especially in Italy. We did not manage to get this as social democrats, because the Christian <coughs> democrats, of which Berlusconi is a part, blocked it. Democratic development, democratic social political development, needs independent media. And that's why, where the media are for. So social stories, political stories, good questions, good items for the people. Wherever journalists are unable to work, wherever there are spots on the earth where there are no independent journalists at work, at these very same spots, barbaric acts will spread, violence will spread, because there is no independent critical eye to report on it, to tell the world what is happening.